Today we're going to work on this Timex T308S radio alarm clock. Hopefully we're going to do a couple of body modifications. The first one will be that of the LED display. We want to see if we could change, modify the lights in here somehow, some way to make it a little bit brighter. Not too bright. We don't want to make it look like Earl Scheib's living room, that's for sure. Secondly and primarily, we are going to add a antenna terminal block and get rid of this wire. You know the bad thing about HDTV? Sometimes you just need to go landscape. So let's flip this little dude this way. So we follow the black wire right here and instead of unsoldering or un getting rid of all that wax, I'm just going to snip this off to where I need it. I'll probably cut it about so enough room to put the jacket on and off and that'll be that'll be it however before we do the terminals we're gonna go ahead and tear it apart and try to get to this back display so we have a screw here there there Here a screw, there a screw, everywhere a screw. Old McDonald. All right, so probably going to need to remove the transformer. And we have we have screws down here holding that in and up there. So let's get started, shall we?
Well, there it is, all disassembled. Let's hope we can put it back together. And there we go. There are the four LEDs from the top. And absolutely nothing on the bottom. So for this gooey tape. Let's see what we could do. We need to separate the speaker here so that's not in the way. Uh, minimize our collateral damage. There's the uh, piezo speaker for the uh, emergency alarm. And you know, while I'm here, I might as well recap this. Or at least entertain the idea of recapping it. What do you think? And we'll shoot the uh, volume control. Although it was not making any noise, it was actually working just fine. But again, I'm here. I'm this far into it. Might as well do it. Okay, I moved the camera so I could work on this a little easier. And hopefully you'll get a better view of what's going on. What we want to do is move this speaker and housing out of the way. So we'll tin our iron. and just pop these off. That's the speaker made by Daiwa. De, Deja Vu. Somebody like that. Just out of curiosity, I wonder what uh, what the ohm is on that. Let's grab our ohm meter and test that out while we're here. So we're getting a reading of about 7.078 ohms. So it's an 8 ohm speaker. What's kind of cool about this, if I turn the meter to um, three coil, throw it up on uh, 200 uh, micro henrys, get a tone. Ain't that cool? Look at the size of that magnet on there. That's a nice size magnet. It's got some weight behind it, so you know it definitely pumps out some, some volume. I'm going to remove this back panel so we don't break any wires. We've got the battery here, piezo speaker, and that batch of wires. Now I need to tear this ring off to access up underneath here. What I need to do is see about cutting some holes in this back pane so I could run LEDs up this way so the whole thing is properly illuminated. In order to tear that off, I have to remove this shielding, which is soldered in, because up underneath here, we have screws uh, that appears I have screws in uh, four points to tear that off. So since this is a little bit thicker solder, I currently have my soldering iron set to 500 degrees. I'm going to increase that to 700 to pop that off quickly. And so I've got this point here and this point, and that's, that's all I have, it's just those two points. Now 
Now here's up underneath that cover and we have four screws that need to come out and those also appear to be a size PH1. We have five caps underneath here and they're all embedded with hot glue so I may or may not replace those but I will check them out to check their value out to see where we're at with them and if they are out I will go ahead and remove those So, it goes into this diffuser. Now, what I was hoping was I was able to drill out, um, cut away some of the plastic on the bottom of this and run some new lights up in here. But we have... We have a glass ledge with this protecting coating over. So, what we might do now, in light of this, is because we have room up underneath this, to just simply lay down a couple of bulbs and have them shine through here, but hopefully without any hot spots. Oops. Shine through here without any hot, hot spots. And I was wrong about uh, protective coating. Because you notice on the board, we got all those connections, which will go up into the LCD display and tell it what to display. So the next thing we need to do before we go any further is we need to power this up and get some test readings out of here, see what kind of voltage we're playing with. I'm getting about 7.78 uh, volts out of the lights and they are hooked up in series. But what's rather surprising is that Hooking this up, I went ahead and connected it to a speaker just for the heck of it. And I was rather surprised at how well this thing sounds with a different speaker. Now, the speaker I'm using is a vintage 1970s realistic bookshelf speaker. I don't know the model number offhand. I'll put it on the screen with magic. But listen. <laughs> As you hear, it has really good tone quality to it. Uh, the highs are awesome. I'd have to try it on AM to see what it sounds like on AM. Um, the speaker, I think, is only 10 or 15 watt speaker. As you heard, the radio drives it just fine. Uh, really impressive, really impressive. Too bad this thing's mono, or I might be inclined to uh, hook up some speaker terminals and have some external speakers. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact of downsizing, I might entertain that either way. Nature sounds. As he's preserving us right now, or are we not? Uh, uh, you and I and everyone listening are, are held over the abyss of nothingness by God's will that we continue to exist, correct? That's correct. All right. That's a, that's a that sounds really, really good. Really impressed with that. So here's what I've decided to do was to replace the yellow, orange LEDs with a nice bright white. I'll replace all four of these and then I'll see about putting one on either side of the display 
to help give it a uh, an all-around level of brightness. One thing I almost forgot to check, and I did that off camera, and it looks good to me, so let me show it to you, is the levels of brightness intensity. So this is on high, medium, and low. So I think that that will be so much better to view at nighttime in the darkness than those little goofy orange yellow things. There it is with all four LEDs replaced. And now need to put the other side ones in and see what happens.